David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you the smallest pen I have ever reviewed. Uh, as a fan of larger pens, I've mostly avoided the mini pen market. I have a few, but I have grown to appreciate smaller pens more. Uh, the pen I have for you today is the latest release from Caveco in their Lilliput line. And that would be the Lilliput in green. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Lilliput. I'm going to talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Caveco for providing this pen for review. The pen arrives in this box. Uh, there is a green outer sleeve to match the color of the pen. Uh, and then we have this very cool Caveco 10 that some of their pens come in. Um, I've always liked these tens. I don't get rid of them like most other packaging. Um, I really find myself trying to find other uses for them. They're just neat. Um, inside there is a little information about the history of Caveco. Uh, there is a Caveco sticker. And then there is also a pen. This is the Lilliput in green. Uh, as you can see, this is a very small pen. Uh, the Lilliput is available in a number of different colors. Uh, a quick aside, I, I wish that retailers were more consistent in regard to the wording they use in their descriptions online. Uh, one retailer described this model as a limited production, another one said it was a collector's edition, and another one described it as a special edition. Um, I think it's more on the manufacturer, though, to make it clear to retailers how they want the pen represented. Uh, if they don't, then retailers are kind of left to make decisions on their own, which will mean there'll be some inconsistencies between retailers, which I hate to see. Uh, just a pet peeve of mine. Uh, back to this pen, though. The Lilliput is a pen that I was well aware of, but I have resisted purchasing. Uh, there is one model that has a very cool flame treatment on it. We'll uh, talk about price later, but that flame treatment model cost about three times as much as one of the standard Lilliputs, which this green model falls under. So I feel the price was a bit much for that special model, but the price for this one here is considerably more reasonable. But we'll talk about that here in a bit. Um, I do care for this green though. It has a rather muted vibrance uh, as opposed to like a matte or a shiny look. The pen is made from lightweight aluminum. It only weighs eight grams in total. Uh, that's as much as a house key. Uh, the cap only weighs two grams, which is as heavy as an American dime. So we're talking very light here. I will say, though, that even though this pen is light, it doesn't feel cheap. Um, I've used other lightweight aluminum pens where you feel like you could like crush it with your bare hands if you weren't careful. Uh, that's not the case with this pen. Uh, it's light, but it's sturdy. It's a quality material. Uh, it's the epitome of a pocket pen as well. I find that it's better to keep this pen uh, in a pants pocket rather than a shirt pocket. With it being so light, uh, it's prone to fall out of a shirt pocket if you're not careful. Um, I believe the Lilliput name is a take on the fictional island nation of Lilliput from the Jonathan Swift novel, Gulliver's Travels. In that book, Gulliver encountered Lilliputians, the inhabitants of that island, uh, who were very small in size compared to him. Uh, there was one small difference, though. Uh, the Lilliput in the book has two L's, and this pen just has one. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the cap. Uh, it is rounded, and on the top... The Caveco logo is printed. The cap is straight. There's no clip or roll stop. Uh, at the top of the cap, it's printed with Caveco Collection. Uh, then there's a very small step down to the barrel, which, like the cap, is straight. And then at the end of the barrel, there are some posting threads. And at the end, like the top of the cap, it is rounded. The cap twists off with three rotations. Uh, with a pen this thin, three rotations really doesn't feel excessive. And underneath, appropriately enough, we have a rather diminutive nib. Uh, while it is small, I have always found the Caveco medium nibs to be very smooth. Uh, the nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and double broad. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section is slightly concave, and then it transitions into the cap threads uh, and a very small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, like the rest of the pen, the section is rather small. Uh, while it is metal, I don't find it to be slick at all. And despite the section being so small, I really don't find my grip to spill over to the threads that much, but um, I don't find the threads to be sharp at all, or that transition. In fact, the entire transition from the section to the barrel is rather smooth. 
So I find the Lilliput to be, be very comfortable in the hand, uh, even though it's a little bit thinner than I typically prefer. Uh, if I am just writing a quick note, I can use this pen unposted. Uh, it's just long enough for me to do so. However, if this pen is really meant to use posted. Uh, the cap does screw to post. Um, I find that the rounded design at the back of the barrel really helps guide the cap into the correct position and makes posting very easy. Uh, once you have posted, you can see here, while still rather thin, it makes for a decent sized pen. You'll see in the size comparisons, but it's almost equal in length to an Aurora Optima. Uh, this is a cartridge only pen. Uh, Caveco does make these small plunger type converters, uh, but while it will fit in the section, uh, it's a little too long to fit in the barrel. If you filled this up with ink when you screwed it into the barrel, it would actually depress the plunger about halfway down when you put the barrel back on. And that would not be a good thing to have happen. So the best thing here is to stick to cartridges. Uh, with this pen being made of aluminum, eye dropping would not be recommended. The Caveco Lilliput is available from a wide variety of retailers and sells for $60. Um, I've noticed several retailers are currently sold out of this particular model, so you might need to search around a bit in order to find someone who has stock on hand. But it would be worth the effort to track one of these down. As someone who uh, typically doesn't gravitate towards smaller pens like this, um, I've spent the last couple of weeks off and on using this pen, and I find myself enjoying using it more and more. Um, for me personally, I wouldn't consider this pen to be like a workhorse or everyday writer as far as a main pen, but I would consider it as part of an everyday carry routine. Um, this is a perfect compact pen to keep with a notebook or something along those lines. It doesn't take up much space, it writes well, and it's just fun to use. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Caveco Lilliput. Uh, here it is with another Caveco model I recently reviewed, which is the Sport in the Iridescent Pearl. Uh, here it is with a Shone Design Pocket 6. And then here it is with a unique pen from Visconti called the Viscontina. Uh, this is a pen that I purchased. I think I've told this story before, but uh, when I purchased it, I thought it was a full-sized pen. Uh, and then I purchased it and thought it was a decent price. And then when I got it, I opened it up and saw how small it was uh, and was very surprised. I actually went back to the listing and to check it out and they, they represented it correctly. They had the measurements on there. I just ignored them. Uh, it also showed up with a necktie. So that was an interesting bonus. But one of these days, I might have to get around to reviewing this, but it was something available a long time ago and uh, it's hard to find now. But that's what it looks like in comparison to the Caveco. In regard to some other pens, this is what it looks like with a Twisby Mini. Uh, this is the Aurora Optima. And then finally, uh, going from the smallest and lightest pen in my collection, this is the heaviest pen in my collection, which is a Kara's Custom Ink. Uh, and this is all copper. Uh, and that just in the sheer weight of it, it would take 20 of these pens to equal the weight of this one copper pen. Now, in regard to uncapped comparisons, let's actually do posted comparisons since that's how you're going to be using this pen. Uh, this is what it looks like with the Shone Design Pocket 6. Uh, and then here it is with the Caveco Sport. And then finally, I mentioned it during the review, but it's very similar in size to the Aurora Optima when the Optima is uh, unposted. Here we go with a writing sample for the Caveco Lilliput. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. Uh, and the ink that I'm using today is from Ferris Wheel Press. and is one of my favorite green inks that I've discovered recently, and it is called Misguided Mistletoe.
This is what the ink looks like. Um, it's a nice healthy green with some shading and then you can see there's some shimmer to it as well. Uh, this is what it looks like in regard to Papier Plume's Irish Channel Green. And then here it is with Colorverse Schrodinger. This is what the Ferris Wheel Press 38 milliliter bottles look like. I always thought the bottles looked very cool. Uh, the neck is rather thin though, so it's hard to get pens in here. And as you can see in the bottom, there is some shimmer that then when you shake up, get mixed in with the ink. But Ferris Wheel Press makes some really nice inks that you could check out. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, I mentioned it previously, but I am a big fan of the Caveco Medium nibs. Um, I find that they're fairly smooth and kind of pack a big punch, even though it's a rather small nib. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. Um, in regard to ink flow, I think it's rather decent. And in regard to reverse writing... It is a little sharp, but lays down a nice extra, extra fine line. And then in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up just fine. So there we have the Caveco Lilliput in the green. Um, I'm really glad that I got to spend some time with this pen. Uh, overall, I think that it's uh, it's unique, it's fun to use, uh, and it's also reasonably priced for what it is and what it brings to the table. So I think it's something well worth checking out. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.